Is it compression neuropathy or sciatica? Pain radiating to the lower extremity can occur from disc herniation, lumbar radiculopathy, and sciatica. But many other causes can mimic the symptoms of lumbar radiculopathy, resulting in similar presentations. The physician should consider an alternative diagnosis when the patient presents with pain that may cause sciatica-type symptoms radiating to the lower extremity and mimics disc herniation. Disc herniation usually has a different pattern of symptoms, so the physician needs to distinguish the sciatica impersonators from disc herniation. Entrapment syndromes of the lower extremity can mimic lumbar radiculopathy and disc herniation. There are many types of entrapment syndrome of the lower extremity. One of these conditions that can mimic lumbar radiculopathy is compression neuropathy. And patients that reporting these symptoms may attribute these symptoms to a spinal condition and the patient may think they have a disc herniation. So what is compression neuropathy? The patient will have compression of a nerve in the lower extremity and the patient will have symptoms similar to sciatica or irritation of the nerve root. So compression of the common perineal nerve usually arise from trauma about the knee. Also, a ganglion cyst is the major cause of compression of the perineal nerve. You are aware that the common perineal nerve has two branches, superficial perineal that gives sensation to the top of the foot and innervates the perineal muscles, and the deep perineal nerve, which its compression will create tibialis anterior weakness. And that tibialis anterior weakness can result from an L4 or an L5 radiculopathy. So if you have a compression on the deep perineal nerve around the knee, or if you have compression on the L4 or L5 nerve root at the spine, these two different conditions can cause weakness of the tibialis anterior and maybe even a foot drop. And also, the L5 nerve root supplies the gluteus medius. So if the patient has an L5 radiculopathy that caused a foot drop, most likely that patient will also have weakness of the abductor muscles in about 85% of the cases. If that patient has a foot drop caused by a perineal nerve neuropathy, that patient should not have an ipsilateral hip abductor weakness because it's not caused by a nerve root. It's caused by the peripheral nerve. This is the peripheral nerve, and this is the nerve root. So if the foot drop of the patient is associated with an ipsilateral hip abductor, then this is probably caused by an L5 radiculopathy. And if the patient has foot drop and no hip abductor weakness, then this is probably caused by a perineal neuropathy. In this condition, you examine the knee for a palpable mass and positive tenel sign on the proximal fibula. And if the patient had a foot drop, then you may need to get an MRI of the spine. If the MRI of the spine does not show the cause of the foot drop, then you do an EMG. The EMG and nervous studies can differentiate proximal causes from distal causes of the condition especially if the MRI is not clear. And you will check the short head of the biceps. If the short head of the biceps is affected, then there is a proximal cause. If the short head of the biceps is not affected, then the cause occurs below innervation of the short head of the biceps. If the MRI of the lumbar spine is normal 
and AMG is consistent with compressive perineal neuropathy at the knee, then you need to get an MRI of the knee to see if there is a ganglion cyst or any other cause that is compressing the nerve at that level. Superficial perineal nerve compression usually occurs due to facial defect about 12 cm proximal to the lateral malleolus where it exits the fascia of the anterolateral leg. The mechanism of injury usually inversion injury in addition to the facial defect. The person will have numbness and tingling over the dorsum of the foot and it worsens by plantar flexion and inversion of the foot. Treatment is observation or facial defect release in difficult cases. The deep perineal nerve compression can be caused by an inferior extensory tenaculum or osteophytes over the telonavicular joint. It's known as anterior tarsal syndrome. Patient will have pain in the dorsum of the foot with radiation to the first web space and positive tenel sign over the deep perineal nerve. The posterior tibial nerve can also be compressed and is known as tarsal tunnel syndrome. Tarsal tunnel syndrome is a compression neuropathy of the tibial nerve at the tarsal tunnel, and it can lead to pain and parathesia of the plantar foot. The patient will complain of burning plantar foot pain with positive tunnel sign over the tibial nerve. EMG and nervous studies can confirm the diagnosis. Spot compression of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve will give anterolateral thigh prosthesia. It's called neuralgia prosthetica. The lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh is purely sensory and it comes from L2, L3 nerve roots. It may be confused with radiculopathy from these levels. It courses underneath the ilioinguinal and it may be compressed in this area. The patient may complain of numbness or burning sensation along the anterior thigh, which is usually improved by sitting. The external forces may compress the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh, such as thigh genes and belts. Obesity, diabetes, and pregnancy are risk factors. It may also occur during surgery from prone position. The presence of hip flexor weakness is more consistent with L2, L3 radiculopathy than neuralgia prosthetica. Diagnosis can be considered when the lumbar MRI is negative for evidence of nerve root compression Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.